Many years now, we've been able to take the food we eat for granted. We go to the supermarkets and it's all there at a cost that most of us can afford. And then, of course, there's the huge variety. But in the last few years, there have been warning signs that all that is about to change. Last year, British families saw average grocery bills rise by £750. There were food riots on three continents. In Britain, we now import nearly half of what we eat, and we face unprecedented competition for that food in a world with more people and changing diets. I've discovered how the food we eat drains global water resources, how rising oil prices could lead to drastic adjustments to our diet, and how climate change threatens food production at home and abroad. Tonight, I reveal the global food security crisis and what it could mean for the food on our plates. The demand for food right across the world is rising, and because we import so much of what we eat, we're going to be right in the thick of the competition for those food supplies. So I'm setting off on a journey to see if world food production can keep pace with that rising demand and to see what effect it will have on us back here in Britain. I'm starting out in Delhi, capital of India, the country with the fastest growing population in the world. They're now facing problems in trying to feed an extra 17 million people every year. And it's a situation we may even be making worse. Over the last few decades, India's been seen as an agricultural success story. In fact, the country is pretty much self-sufficient. That is, until now, just recently, things have begun to change. In 2006, for example, the country had to import about 6 million tonnes of wheat. I'm going to the Punjab to find out why. This small state, about 200 miles north of Delhi, produces one-fifth of all of India's wheat. We must have been travelling for about two and a half hours now, and it's been wheat field after wheat field, all ripe and ready for harvest. It's little wonder they call Punjab the breadbasket of India. But looks can be deceiving. Food production here in this region is now under threat. Punjab means the land of the five rivers, but many decades of intensive agriculture have started to drain the state dry. I joined local farmer Sukhdev Singh to find out about the problems that he faces. This is um, fresh, fresh. Roti. Just now you made it. Oh, it's hot. Oh, hot. Sukhdev is now forced to drill deeper and deeper down for water to irrigate his crop. I like this a lot. So, Sukhdev, how many wells have you had on this farm? Ten. Ten wells? Ten, ten, ten wells. How deep is this? One hundred... 10 feet. Okay. This is 220. 220 feet. 220 this one. feet. So that's the final one? Final one. That's, uh, that's uh, the one you're using now? Using now. Uh -huh. 550 feet. It's 550 feet. 550 feet. feet. But the deeper they go, the poorer the quality of water. It's more salty and much less effective for irrigation. We have so, the quality of the water is finished. And now we have 
और नीचे जाने का प्रयास किया तो कुछ अच्छा हुआ लेकिन फिर भी नंबर वन पानी नहीं मिला Thousands of farmers in Punjab have been forced to borrow beyond their means to pay for the specialist equipment needed to dig the new deep wells and irrigate their crops. Are you yourself in debt at all? No. Yes. Does that worry you? बिल्कुल। वो तो इसीलिए तो मानसिक तनाव जब होता है, इसीलिए तो इंसान सुइसाइड की तरफ चला जाता है। In Sukhdev's own village, there have been several suicides in recent years. It's similar across Punjab. In fact, many farm workers are now moving out of agriculture altogether. What does it feel like to see this land um, that you've known so well become like this, where, where it's become short of water? How does it make you feel? <laughs> हमें लगता है कि एक दिन जब बंजर हो जाएगी जब कुछ भी नहीं होगा ही। पंजाब's water table is dropping by as much as a meter a year. Wheat production across the state has been in decline for a decade. It's so easy to take this stuff for granted, but the water scarcity here in the Punjab is just a glimpse of what's happening in so many other parts of the world. Already, more than one billion people do not have access to safe water. Global water consumption is predicted to double every 20 years. Indian author Vandana Shiva has investigated what this means for the global food supply we all depend on. So could water shortages actually be a break on producing food for people on agriculture? In particular communities, we've already crossed that point. When I travel the length and breadth of my country, I see villages where there are locks on the door and people have migrated because the disappearance of water meant the end of agriculture. Within 15 years, world water shortages could reduce food production by more than the entire current U.S. grain crop. And we are partly to blame. You've talked about India and the shortage of water, but you haven't talked about the U.K. Is it at all relevant to, to us? I mean, we think we've got loads of water. Countries like England are increasingly importing their food supplies. If a farmer grows lettuce, in Punjab, he is using groundwater to make that lettuce grow. When that lettuce is exported to England, it carries with it virtual water. It carries a very heavy water footprint. In effect, the UK and the rich countries, they have imported virtual water, which they're not seeing, but they have simultaneously exported drought. In fact, most of what we eat draws down heavily on global water resources. It takes up to 130 milliliters of water to grow a gram of lettuce. 3.4 liters to produce one gram of rice. And one gram of lamb can use nearly 15 liters of water. Every one of us in Britain uses about 3,000 litres of foreign water a day, and most of it in the form of food. 